Fellas, 10 years of Smash. Endless stories. Endless story times. I have so many things I could share with you. So many things to tell you. But this one is a little different. I've said before how many stories that I have that have left me somewhat uncomfortable. Maybe a little anxious. Maybe a little worried about the future. But this is the only one where I almost died. And there isn't an exaggeration here. I almost died. And it was the result of my own actions. I nearly died at a tournament. Would you like to hear me tell the story? Chat? They all said yes. That's great, because I'm going to. This is the story of how I almost died rigging a Super Smash Brothers tournament. Nobody's gonna get this, that what I put on the screen. Nobody even knows what, what's happening here. It's the end of a movie that was really famous when, before you all were born, okay? Our story begins, as it so often does, an introduction of the ensemble cast. What's important here is I need you to know who all of these people are, okay? I don't normally do this, but I need you to know everybody in this story, and we need to introduce them up front. The names have been changed to protect the innocent, okay? So, the first person, let's say, is Brainy, okay? He's a smart guy, very good player in Smash, is a little bit full of himself, but is very talented, and he's a good friend. Second person, let's say, is Spike. Spike is, um, very good at Smash. Um, we'll have more to say about Spike later. Just know that Spike is in this story, okay? <laughs> Next up is someone who we're gonna call Sleepy. Sleepy is in this story. You might find out why by the end, okay? And then the last person that I need you to know is Madman. Madman is named this not because he rages or he's especially angry, but he's a pretty suave dude, and um, he's gonna have uh, quite a story arc by the end of this story, okay? So these are our four players, and of course, me. I'm here too. I'm your guide along this journey. So just keep in mind, these four people are the real players on stage in this, uh, in, in this production, okay? It was a fine spring day on Smashboards.com. For you see, there were tournament listings everywhere. Events were starting back up as the weather started to get better. And I was sitting around trying to make some money on a weekend where I was free. I wasn't busy. If you've seen the other video, hey, go ahead. If you, if you haven't seen the other one, go ahead and click this. There's a video about sniping tournaments and what that was like, the culture of it. I beat up some kids at their, I didn't beat them up. I beat some kids at Smash Brothers on their birthday. You would basically go on here and you would snipe tournaments, right? So I went down and I was looking for tournaments, trying to find somewhere to go over the weekend. And then I saw it. Enhance. Gamers Paradise, North Carolina Brawl Tournament, $500 pop bonus. $500, you say? Ho, ho, ho. That's quite a payout. I saw $500 and I said, yes, please. I wonder how far this North Carolina tournament is from me and if it's worth going. Let's take a look. Five hours and 12 minutes for a tournament where I may win $300. Hell yeah, that's worth it. Absolutely. That is the biggest payout of my life. I get to play video games and make money over a weekend? Absolutely. And I get a few people in on it who also want to snipe this tournament. One thing that you guys got to understand, North Carolina Brawl was free. Oh my god, they were so free. It was, you could, you could take money from them without even trying. They would give it to you. And they would money match you out the wazoo. Please, would you give me some matchup experience? Oh yeah, sure kid. Five bucks a pop. Boom, boom, boom. You would have a full tank of gas in half an hour. It was so easy to stomp North Carolina. So we were all positive that we would do well. We all get together. Sleepy in the front seat. He's the guy that owns the car. He's the driver on this excursion. Brainy is along for the ride as well. And of course, there's me in the back seat. So we, this eclectic group of people, arrive in North Carolina, mostly no worse for wear. You know, we stopped a few times for gas, took a little bit longer, but we got there on time and it was fine. And this is generally what the college tournament looks like. If you guys haven't been to a college tournament, this is just kind of what it uh, it is. It's, uh, it, it's like a room that's set up in either a classroom or like a side thing, bunch of sweaty dudes playing, no more than 30 people. 
So this is uh, the University of North Carolina. And of course, all three of us roll up together and enter the room. Hello, everybody. And as we enter the room, we're getting some whispers. Oh my god, MDVA's here. Oh, MDVA came. Yo, they're pretty. I don't care about Sleepy. Sleepy's not very good, but the other two. Oh shit, MDVA showed up. We gotta get ready. We start scoping out and looking around, okay? And in the back of the room, we see a couple people. One of them is Madman. Madman is playing on a CRT right here. Now, I did not give you this context before. Madman is number one in North Carolina, or at least he should be. He's a very, very good player in North Carolina. Uh, doesn't really travel much, but everybody knows he's very talented, okay? But also, in the back of the room, is Spike. Why did Spike go over here? Now, one thing I didn't tell you about Spike. Spike is also from MDVA. Spike is very good, and Spike didn't tell anybody he was coming to this. He told nobody that he would be here. He tried to snipe this alone. Which means he probably saw all of us talking and he decided to come here on his own. Nobody came with him. He drove all this way alone. Five hours. But I'll tell you, Spike is not happy to see us. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So they start putting everything together and we have a bracket here. Okay? So let's go down the line. Brainy is first seed. He's the best player in our region and he showed up out of nowhere and we know he's good. Spike is second seed. He's a very good player from our region. Better than pretty much anybody except Brainy, but not quite on Brainy's level. So they expect them to meet in a winner's finals, right? I'm the third seed down here because I'm the third best person at the tournament, allegedly. That's what people think. And then Madman is fourth best. He's number one in his state, but I think they realize that North Carolina isn't quite at the same level of MDVA. So he's the fourth seed for this event. They expect him to lose to Brainy, but then come back later. And Sleepy uh, gave us a ride to the tournament, which is very good of him. Thank you so much, Sleepy, for helping us here. Sleepy is the uh, the ride seed. He did a great job getting us to this tournament safely. Good. Thank you, Sleepy. You need a Sleepy. It's very important to have somebody who's able to do that. That's very nice. So this is how the bracket is set up for the day. So the first round of tournament starts. Everybody starts playing. Everything goes off without a hitch. Brainy wins first round. Madman wins his round. Spike wins his round. Sleepy wins his round. I win my round. Everything's fine. This is exactly how the bracket is supposed to go. Then we have the second round. Now, what you may notice out of these results, Brainy continues on in winners. Spike has defeated Sleepy, which is just so unfortunate. Sleepy is now out of winner's bracket. But what's more important, Madman has fallen, okay? Madman loses to somebody in his region. This is a North Carolina player. He lost to somebody. It was an upset, seed 13, whatever. He lost to some guy that wasn't supposed to beat him, right? Madman is now in loser's bracket. Keep in mind, he's not out of the tournament. Don't worry, everybody. Hold your horses. He's going to come back. But for now, let's focus on what's happening down here. For you see, I am now matched up with Spike. This is kind of a big deal. So me and Spike usually go about 50-50, all right? But Spike and I have something of a rivalry, okay? Because he said some mean things about me, and it motivated me to get better. He had some choice words, and I took those to heart, right? So we have to play now. So we both sit down to play. Here we are in front of Super Smash Brothers Brawl, as you can see. And we do the strikes and bans and everything like that. I choose my weapon of choice, of course. King DDD, obviously. And he chooses... Oh, I don't know. Let's pick a random character. Uh, Kirby. So we play our match, right? We have a bit of a fight back and forth, okay? And eventually, I win the first game. Spike starts telling me... Hey, man, I'm really hungry. Can I go get some food? No. <laughs> Come on, dude. I'm just so hungry. Can I go eat before we play our next match? I'll be able to eat just really quick. Can I just go eat a burger? No. You're sitting here, and we're finishing this set. Fine. I end up winning the set. I won the whole set, and I knock Spike into loser's bracket. Again, it could have gone either way. I was just the better player on that day, okay? So I defeat Spike to move on in the tournament, which is delightful because as you can see here, now we have our winner's finals. Look at this. Brainy versus Coney. Amazing. Remember, we rode together and we wanted to snipe this tournament out. 
This was the whole point of us coming together was to be able to meet in winner's finals. But then I have an idea. <laughs> you see, there's a pot bonus at this tournament, which means that one of us is going to make a lot of money, but the other guy isn't going to make a lot of money. So I have an ingenious idea. I get Brainy to meet me in an undisclosed location in the dark. Hey, Brainy. Let's cheat. <laughs> Essentially, what I want to do is say that I beat Brainy. Here's the thing. Look at the bracket again. I defeated Spike, right? The thing is, I go 50-50 with Spike. Me beating Spike, that's a coin flip. We don't know if it's going to happen or not. But what I haven't told you is that Brainy shits on Spike. Dumpsters him. The matchup between Brainy and Spike is like 95-5. Spike has not beaten Brainy in three years. So I'm like... <laughs> oh, Brainy, have I got an opportunity for you. I say, Brainy, you let me win. You let me move on. We're going to say that we played, and we're going to say that I beat you. And Brainy, to his credit, says no. See, Brainy is something of a, of, a, of a cringe moral guy, you know? He believes in the heart of competition and uh, the better player persevering and all that bullshit. Oh, it's important to play your... I don't know. He watches a lot of anime, I guess. It's weird. So he says, no, he won't do this with me. I'm like, dude, we rode together. You don't understand. One of us is going to leave with so much money and the other one's going to be so sad. Brainy. Please, and after a couple minutes of whittling down, Brainy says, okay. <laughs> oh, yes. So now Brainy is waiting in the loser's bracket. I'm now in grands. I have, for the record, defeated Brainy in combat. That's what everybody else thinks. What I've told Brainy is that, hey, if we split, we'll split the money at the end. You wait... You wait in losers. You play the guy. We'll split, and we'll say that you won the tournament. You beat me in two sets at the end. I'll give you first place at the tournament, but you and I will split the money. He's down for this idea. So, uh, <laughs> our plan goes off without a hitch, right? I defeat Brainy, and no one is the wiser. Coney wins! Coney wins winner's finals. Coney is now sitting in grands, awaiting his opponent. Has anyone checked on Sleepy? I don't know what Sleepy is. Sleepy is probably playing friendlies. Sleepy is in the corner playing friendly. He's probably fighting CPUs. Now we have our loser's bracket ready. Spike and Madman have fought all the way up to loser semis. There's only four people left in the tournament. And we knew that they would. Madman, despite his early loss, has fought all the way back up. The reason that we did this setup is because we were positive that Spike was going to make it to Brainy and then Brainy was going to dump on Spike, okay? Spike gets third, Brainy gets second, and it works out exactly like the seeding said. However, that is not what happens today. Madman beats Spike in an unprecedented upset. Oh, shit. We've made a terrible error. I have no idea how Spike lost this to this day. There's no reason Spike should have lost this. Yeah, Madman is good. But Spike is nuts. Maybe he just didn't eat. Maybe he just didn't take any time to get ready for the next match. But Madman does something, and Madman comes out on top. And now, me and Brainy are in a bit of a pickle, right? Because uh, Brainy has a shot of losing to Madman. However, I do not. You see, my character dumps on Madman. My character is like 95-5 with Madman. Madman could not defeat me. It doesn't matter how good he is. It doesn't matter how hot of a streak he's playing on. I would dump on Madman every day of the week. So how do we solve this quandary? Now we have jeopardized our splits. I have talked Brainy into a bad deal. He might get third at this tournament, and then him and I have to split second and third. Well, no, because I would have beaten Madman. But first and third. So Brainy and I are panicking. We don't know what we're going to do. Madman, fresh off of his win against Spike, is just standing in the, in the room. Brainy and I find him, 
and we walk up and we decide to come clean with the plot. We decide, hey, listen, we're just gonna tell him exactly what happened, and hopefully he'll understand and we'll be able to figure this out. Hey, Mad Man, how's it going? How you doing? Congrats on beating Spike. Really proud of you, bro. That's a sick win. Mad Man goes, huh? What? Oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, ha I thought I would have a tough time, but I've really been working on that matchup. Listen, uh, Mad Man. We should probably go replay our set. What do you mean, Coney? You guys just played your set, and it said that you beat Brainy, which is terrific, because now I get to fight Brainy. Yeah, see, we didn't actually ever play. We just wrote that down to save time. We actually have to go play the set now. We thought that you were gonna lose to Spike. Madman is starting to live up to his namesake. I think you're bullshitting me. I think you guys did play. You're both boys from MDVA, and you just want Coney to be able to counterpick me in a matchup so you guys can split. I think you guys are in on it, and you're full of shit. Madman, listen. No, dude, this is not personal. Please listen to me. This has nothing to do with you. I'm so sorry. I'm not cheating. We did this not because of you, but because of Spike. Spike is an asshole. Spike keeps cheating in our region. He said such mean, nasty things to both of us. He's cheated people out of wins. We did this just to make sure he would lose. This only gets Madman more irate. You what? You defiled the sanctity of my competition? You came to my home state and decided to rig my bracket just so I wouldn't beat up your shitty friend? And he gestures to Brainy. You both know that I would fuck him up if we played, and that's why you're trying to get me to fight you. Because you're just going to chain grab me and play DDD, and I know that I would fuck him up. And now, Brainy's mad. Because Brainy is a very prideful player. I have not mentioned this yet. Brainy takes shit very seriously. What the fuck do you mean you would beat me in tournament? You wouldn't be able to lace my boots, you shit stain. You couldn't beat me. You've never beaten me. I don't lose to your character. Yeah, you beat Spike. Good shit. I'm really proud of you. You know he's like number four in our state. I've been number one for a fucking year. You can't step to me. These dudes are mad. And I'm over here. <laughs> Watching this all transpire. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this anymore, right? Now they're just shit talking. And it seems as though I'm going to get my way, you know? Because eventually these two are going to play and I'm not at risk. However, I do feel very bad for Brainy who I've roped into this. Eventually, these two end up playing. And, uh, very quickly, <laughs> Madman gets shit on. <laughs> it's not close. Madman absolutely gets dumpstered. Madman gets destroyed by Brainy in a 3-0 in a blowout. And then we win the tournament. <laughs> That's it. We won. We won. <laughs> I I know there was a lot of buildup, but we won the tournament. Brainy pulls it out. Hooray for cheating. Yeah, we both walked out with maybe $200 each in our pockets. Congratulations to us two. So the full results of the tournament means that I came in second, right? Brainy came in first, Madman in third, and Spike in fourth. Incredible tournament. Everybody had a great time, and everybody after the tournament chills out. We talk to Madman a little bit more. He understands. We tell him we really weren't trying to mess with you. It's not personal. Madman gets it, and we all go out to cookout. Yay! Cookout! If you've never been to cookout, cookout is delicious. It is a uh, Atlantic South mainstay. You can get so much food there for like 20 bucks. It's basically Taco Bell, but for barbecue. Delicious. But after some time we realize it's 2 a.m. We still have a five-hour drive home without traffic. We should not have stayed this long. Now, we're all poor college students. We're not getting a hotel. I'm pretty sure that these guys had places to be the next day. So there's no way we're staying in North Carolina tonight. So we're going to go ahead and drive all the way home at 2 a.m. Keeping in mind, we started this journey at 7 a.m. the day before. So we all pack back into the car. It's nighttime now, and everybody is feeling a little tired. Now, after 
about half an hour, I realized just how fatigued I am. The adrenaline is beginning to wear off. I've just gotten second at a tournament, but really first, because I was the, the guy behind the whole operation. I was able to con myself into this uh, grand final situation. I start to doze off. I'm gonna go sleep. Good night. We haven't heard much from Sleepy today, right? Why, we had to check on him earlier, and he was playing CPUs. This is where Sleepy becomes integral to the story. <laughs> For you see, there is a reason that we named him Sleepy. After a couple hours, Sleepy lives up to his namesake. And he dozes off on the road. We're on a major highway. And I don't really remember exactly what happened. I just remember waking up to this. Oh my god! Oh my god! Help! Help! Oh my god! Jesus Christ! I'm telling you. Dude, we were dri- This was us. This was us. We're in the middle of the highway. Jesus Christ! Help! Help us! Sleepy, please wake up! It was so bad. Sleepy was... He was out like a light. This is us. Are you ready? Look at this. Jesus Christ, Sleepy! And eventually, we end up like this. Backwards, facing the other direction on the highway. I never forgot the feeling that that gave me. If you've never been in a situation where you lose control of your car, you're like this on the highway, okay? Like literally sideways. There's something that washes over you. There's a sense of serenity as it's happening. And maybe it's just me, but I remember thinking, okay, I'm dead. And I'm okay with that. I've lived a fine life. I lived to 22. I'm, I'm gone. There's nothing I can do about this. Goodbye. And I just laid back in the seat. I accepted it. Now, we did end up living. The car was basically like this on the highway. But I will tell you, the front two tires are blown out. It was like this on all of them. Do you see this? It was that. He was fishtailing like crazy, dude. When he woke up, he like swerved so hard and thank God there was nobody else on the road. It was like 6 a.m. I think. We were almost home. He made it four hours. What a trooper. But all the tires popped just like this. It was like torn, right? So we all get out of the car. We call Sleepy's mom and we wait a couple hours on the side of the road. But I will tell you this story does have a happy ending because I'm here to tell you about it now. At the end of the day, we all made it home safe. We were only about an hour away from home. It wasn't too bad. Sleepy's mom came to pick us up. They got it towed to the rest area or whatever. They got all the tires replaced and we got home maybe $200 richer. Sleepy asked if we could give him some money to help pay for the tires on the way home. And we told him, yeah, absolutely. And then we didn't do it because we forgot. I think that's what happened anyway. <laughs> that's so crazy. I think we forgot. Listen, Sleepy, if you're watching this and you know who you are, I, I'll, I got a hundred bucks for you, bro. My bad. My bad. I was poor back then. Sleepy will never see this. Sleepy isn't around anymore. I think this spooked him. I don't know if he operates motor vehicles. So, now we've come to the end of our story. And you might be saying, Cody, what the hell was up with that last part? That had nothing to do with the rest of the story. You can't possibly think that you deciding to rig a bracket for your own advantage has anything to do with your friend falling asleep while driving. And what I would say to you is maybe open up your mind a little. Be a little bit more open to new experiences. Try to understand that we are all here on this cosmic journey. Perhaps it was karma on that day. Or perhaps Sleepy was just up for 24 hours and competed in a tournament and got his ass beat. 300 miles from his house and had to go to bed. Who can say? All I know is that I appreciate you joining me on this journey. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one. Say goodbye, chat. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye, YouTube. Goodbye. Good movie. That was fun. That was a good time. All we did was just break the, uh, 
We just broke the bracket for our advantage. I thought bracket rigging was a SoCal thing. Oh, God, no. We did it all the time. Dude, PM too. 